When we talk about fit, as in clearance, clearances and fit, we're talking about how tight are these two mating parts, whatever they are. And before we dive into that, uh, I want to introduce a couple of terms that we will talk about again next week when we talk about geometric tolerancing, but these are kind of central to both geometric tolerancing and clearances and fits. One is the idea of maximum material condition. And maximum material condition, just like the name implies, is when you have the most material in your part. And I like to think of it as if you put the part on a scale and you weighed it, when would it weigh the most? So for a shaft, the maximum material condition is the biggest diameter. For a hole, the maximum material condition is the smallest hole. Think about that. When you put this block with a hole on a scale, it's going to be the heaviest when the hole is the smallest. So biggest shaft, smallest hole. The part weighs the most when you put it on a scale. Then the flip side of that is least material condition. So when will the part weigh the least when you put it on a scale? the smallest shaft, the biggest hole. And we can use these two extremes, the, the biggest and the smallest, to evaluate our tolerances that we put on drawings. And this is a good rule of thumb whenever you're designing something. If you always evaluate the two extremes, whatever they are, and they both work, then you can be pretty sure that anything in the middle will work. So when we're thinking about clearances and fits, the tightest fit we will ever have is the smallest hole and the biggest shaft. You can probably picture that. In other words, MMC, maximum material condition, gives you the tightest fit. So the maximum shaft size, the smallest hole size, so the part has the heaviest material, that gives you the tightest fit. And conversely, you would get the loosest fit at least material condition when you had a small shaft and a big hole. Oh, let me just say one more thing. Uh, Geometric tolerancing people often refer to tightest fit as worst case. Now, you might think that's the best case because it's a close fit, but you, you'll hear people say that. Just wanted to mention that. So, you probably remember that the first rule of dimensioning in the ASME Y14.5 dimensioning standards is Every dimension shall have a tolerance. Well, that's great, and we draw our drawings with tolerances on them. But as a designer, how do you decide what tolerance to put on your dimension? Coming to the rescue is an ASME standard. And it's still called an ANSI standard, actually. This is a, a standard that's been around many, many years. It was just... Um, Re, uh, re-approved in 2009, but it's the same standard and they still call it ANSI, ANSI B 4.1. This standard tells you how big a tolerance to put on your dimension depending on what you want to do with your part. So you don't have to try and get creative. It's here in a table and we're going to work on uh, how do you use these tables? You can see there are a lot of numbers there. There are three categories of fit, and let's go through those. A clearance fit is the one where you always have clearance. So uh, you always have the shaft, for example, will always slide through the hole, or the rail will always slide through the slot. And ANSI calls that a running clearance fit. They RC for clearance. So anytime you have a, a, a shaft sliding through a hole or anything like that where you want the thing always to be able to move, 
you've got a clearance fit. So the hole is always bigger than the shaft. An interference fit is the opposite. With an interference fit, believe it or not, the shaft is always bigger than the hole it's supposed to go into. And this goes along with a joke you might have heard where uh, people will say, don't force it, get a bigger hammer. Well, that's <laughs> interference fit is the get a bigger hammer fit. So uh, there are different classes of fit. You might have to pound it with a bigger hammer. You might need a hydraulic press. You might need temperature. That's an interference fit. And the, oh, I forgot to say, uh, and ANSI calls that FN, short for force interference. So the hole is always smaller than the thing that's supposed to fit into it. Why this is good is once you get these parts pressed together, they act as one piece. So you might be pressing a bearing into a bearing housing, and you don't want the bearing race to spin around or you might be fitting a machine shaft into some other part and you, you want it to be fixed. Um, you get a uniform stress all the way around the shaft and the hole or whatever it is. And engineers have calculated these so that no matter what size of uh, mating parts you have, you have a constant pressure in there. So with one class of interference fit, you might need a hydraulic press. Here's a bearing press, pressing bearings into something. With the most extreme case of interference fit, you might actually have to freeze your, your part. This is a shaft. Um, you might freeze it in liquid nitrogen, which as you know is really, really cold. So you, you submerge your part in a tank of liquid hydrogen for 24 hours. And what happens when something is cold? It shrinks. It gets smaller and smaller. And then after 24 hours, you take it out. You carefully put it into the thing it goes into. And when it comes back to room temperature, those two pieces are um, fixed together as if they were one piece. Now. Um, some people like to look at these graphical representations of the clearance fit and the interference fit. I get confused by these, but uh, you might like them. Then there's a third category of fit called the locational fit or a transition fit. To tell you the truth, I don't understand these because uh, they are sometimes a clearance and sometimes an interference. And I still cannot figure out why would you want that. What ANSI says is you use it if you are doing what they call selective assembly, where you're picking a particular part out of a particular bin and picking a mating part. So here are the three, the three things. All right, now let's look at these charts. Here is the um, one of three tables from ANSI that will help us look up our tolerances to put on our dimensions. And so this is an exercise in slowing way down and studying these charts. First thing to notice in this running clearance fit chart is that it has nine different classes. So here is class RC1, the things in here. Here's RC2. And you can see that the classes continue on up to RC9. So what? Well, ANSI gives us descriptions of what each of these classes will give you. And down at the bottom of this slide, I'm letting you know, you could refer to the ANSI standard itself, or you could go to Machinery's Handbook. And uh, I highly recommend having a copy of Machinery's Handbook at some point in your career. It is just a, a vast reference source. And Machinery's Handbook, let me back up, is where I got these tables for you. I copied them for you and uh, put them in a handout for you. Those are out of Machinery's Handbook. 
which got them from the ANSI standard. Anyhow, in running clearance fits, you can see that, OK, RC1 is the class of fit where you do want some clearance. You want the part to be able to slide, but you need almost no play. You need a very close, accurate fit. So maybe a machine way in a machining center would have an RC1. The clearances get progressively looser and looser, as you can see, until we get down to RC9, that is the loosest fit. This is, they call it, wide commercial tolerances. So this is what you might have, oh, if you were designing uh, hinge pins to go in a door hinge, where that can be pretty loose. It, it, you just need the pin to fit in the hinge. That would be an RC9. Here are the classes of locational fits. Because these are not used very often at all, we'll just gloss over those and move on. Here are the force fits, the force and interference fits. And there are five classes of force and interference fits. You can see that ANSI describes class 1, force interference class 1, as a light drive fit. So this is the don't force it get a bigger hammer class of fit. This is where uh, you just get a, a hammer and you lightly tap the thing in. Then we continue on through the tighter and tighter interference fits until we get to class 5, force interference class 5. This is a, uh, they call it a shrink fit. This is where you need liquid nitrogen and or uh, maybe you're using heat to heat up the, the part that has the hole in it. These are shrink fits where you need temperature to make the two parts uh, go together. This is where there's so much interference that um, heavy pressing forces will not work. So you cannot use a hydraulic press on these. You need temperature. So those are the classes of fit. Here is the assignment we're going to do. I put it at the end of these slides just so it's convenient for you, but I put it at the end of the next batch of slides too, so don't worry. We'll come back to this.